Good morning, it's April 23rd. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm Mike Stanton here with Dan Bingham and Chris Flossie from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. Uh, Dan, let's start with you. Um, relatively quiet week in the fixed income markets. When we take a look at our uh, chart of uh, Muni bond yields, we see actually a flat line uh, for, uh, for the week. What, uh, what was happening beneath the surface? Yeah, um, so I, I guess the biggest thing that uh, is going on, a couple of things, one, one of which was the um, proposal out of um, uh, Biden administration about increasing, uh, possibly increasing the capital gains tax. Um, that in and of itself has, is an arcane part of the uh, municipal code that would deal with uh, discount bonds. Um, but sh really shouldn't have much impact on the overall demand of, of uh, traditional municipal bonds. Um, Market-wise, you know, as you say, uh, we're in a pretty flat environment. Uh, you've got 10-year MMD at a 0.93, 30-year to 155. The ratios we've talked about um, continue to be at very, very low levels with 59% in 10-year and 69% in 30-year. Um, so continuing to uh, keep the, the very strong performance within the municipal market relative to other, other uh, asset classes. Um, but one of the, one of the uh, interesting things that's going on is we've talked about the advanced refundings um, and the prospect that, that that might come back. That's still to be determined. Um, but what market uh, participants, what issuers have been doing um, has been issuing forward uh, forward delivery deals to make up for the loss of advanced refundings. Um, and we see that in the calendar where uh, this past week, a billion of uh, California, 145 million Connecticut special tax. Um, and next week, uh, one, uh, out of a $1.5 billion New Jersey TTFA deal, 850 million are going to be forward. So the market um, is certainly making up for the loss of advanced refundings, uh, not through tax taxable issuance, which we had seen um, over the past year or so, but more through forward, forward delivery issuance. And Dan, we saw another $1.9 billion of inflows uh, from Lipper this week into mini bond mutual funds. That kind of demand uh, solves a lot of problems. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's really what's driving the uh, expensive nature of the municipal market. Um, $1.9 billion in inflows this week. Last week was uh, over $2 billion. Um, and, you know, the richness of the municipal market is enticing issuers to, to issue uh, various different formats, including the forwards that we're seeing. And we did see in uh, Barron's this morning, uh, there was a report from uh, Peter Hayes at BlackRock saying he thinks that uh, the ratios may go up a little bit, that uh, the muni have, have run a little further than the treasury market would warrant, but that's still a, a kind of a modest correction he's expecting over a couple of months, so not a, uh, a, a major shift uh, in the short term. So Chris, let's turn to the new issue market. Another strong week for BAM. Uh, we saw the first quarter results in the bond buyer were reported this week that uh, while the market overall was up about 7% in short usage in the first quarter was up 60%. Another strong week for BAM in terms of volume underlying that trend. Uh, what kind of transactions did you see? Yeah, we saw that activity roll into this week as well. We had 450 million of bonds priced across 28 series and 12 states. So we're, we, got, we like to see that demand as dispersed as we could. Um, there were two transactions that accounted for roughly 200 million of our activity, a Bossier water and sewer deal priced by Raymond James, and that deal was in Louisiana, and that was roughly 124 million, and that deal came with a double A minus underlying rating. Uh, there was also, we mentioned last week, an $80 million New Jersey Institute of Technology transaction that priced through the Essex County Improvement Authority, RBC brought that deal for roughly 80 million. And when we look at the preliminary scales versus where the deal is priced, we saw some meaningful yield improvements, so lower yields for the issuer across the scale. So they were very happy with that performance. Um, next, next week, the calendar is expected to be roughly half of what it was this week. It's just over $5 billion as of this morning. Um, but there is a decent amount of BAM activity next week, roughly $300 million expected to price. Uh, there are two lead transactions for next week, a Northern Illinois University deal that's roughly $100 million with Piper Sandler. And there's also a Washington Convention Sports Authority deal that's going to be priced by Seabird. And just to clarify, that is uh, Washington, D.C. Right. And that's the first of several Washington, D.C. Convention Center deals we're expecting to see in the next couple of weeks. Right. That's a Series A. There'll be Series B and C coming uh, in uh, mid-May. Mid yeah, mid so uh, there'll be a lot for the investor community to uh, think about there. Right. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.
Thanks, Mike. Great. Thanks, Mike. market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM-insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM-insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM-eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual.